All right, so I finished in their own words. I don't have a cover anymore. Here's the map. It's talk, it covers pretty much the east coast for everybody who's on the Indians and the colonists who are on there. It covers the time frame between 1600, pretty much, to about the mid-1700s, just before the, Revo before the American Revolution started. So the colonists really started pouring in in the 1600s. Failure occurred, and there was a, a brief period where the their colonists really weren't active on the, the continent, but it didn't take too long before they started coming back. There's many different accounts. Um, some seem uh, pretty genuine, while others, uh, they seem like they're written by more of a professional, all right? Like, these people had some amazing memories. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I can account... Uh, my mem I don't know if my memory is as good as theirs. It's just to keep their stories in a good sequence and captivating. It, uh, it they put in some detail, and I mean, I'm talking about them telling their stories. Maybe like I don't know, ten, twenty years later, sometimes, and they tell it with amazing accuracy. For example, the uh, the 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 slave. Who he talked about uh, being a young child and captured in Africa, brought to some islands near America, and then in, into America for a brief period. Then he went over to England. Uh, his his uh, story was very sophisticated. For me to believe that it was in his own words is is kind of a long stretch. It seems he was helped, and I mean, you know, it's it's probably most likely that you know. It, it it could probably you know it's it looks better to call, to title this in their own words, but I think more accurately it should probably be more like mostly in their own words because even the author changed some of the wording. All right, because some guys mis mispronounced certain uh, things like uh, I don't know like per, somebody's name like a guy could be like LaSalle and somebody was calling him LaSun. Or something like that. So the author did his own uh, in interpretation and just cr made the correction. And then he annotated in like a starred section. He would do that to show that uh, like, you know, just something like this. He'd do like number four, just a correction and let you know that that's what he did. So you're not exactly getting in their own words completely. All right. I especially don't believe it because of the slave's story. It was just... It's such a sophisticated story, and, and based on my observations of, of Africans, and um, it just doesn't seem, it doesn't catch, it, it seems more English. And it, even though that African was raised in England, I mean, he had a late start. Um, he was at a loss. I mean, he, he's, he'd stand out in England even if he was uh, educated. I don't, it doesn't, wasn't, it really didn't uh, say how much education he got. But a lot of the other stories are just in, incredible, though. You know, to to, to tell them, to, for, for some of these people to have survived to be able to tell their stories is incredible. You think that at any point they could have died. Like the woman who was captured for a year and held as a, a hostage uh, for negotiation with the English. She was captured by the Indians. Her, she had a child ripped from her arms and, and killed because it was making too much noise as they were escaping. Indians would do that. Anybody that was lame or limp, making too much noise, they would slaughter. They, there's an account of Indian torture. Indians, call, Indians were called savages by the colonists. Indians called themselves savages. And in, the bo in this book, they acted like savages. It's just incredible how... How much savagery there there was, uh, torture and and uh, being selfish. It was strongly in the Indians' nature. All right, they didn't they didn't really have any regard for for their own well being, for other people's well being. They just they just they it was a part of their culture to torture, to to kill, to just let other people suffer at your hands. Uh, they they just they didn't care they they had to they had to look out for their own they would take slaves too um, usually I think the the women and children just if whoever looked fit enough uh, 
there was just it was difficult uh the english uh, the their whole nature is is to just kill it quickly and ends the the uh the suffering quickly all right indians they don't have that capacity in fact indians would would torture you and then eat you afterward they would see uh the white race as just like a delicacy because it's not not like an indian it's you know white people are not savage so they're going to have a different tasting meat all right it's, it's like uh people in africa eating monkeys all right it's, that's that's how the savages looked at it there i mean there was different approaches between the english and the french and the spanish and how they dealt with the indians the english chose to to just wipe them out uh there, there were there were just Indians that go in into colonist territory, kill everybody, men, women, children, take some captives, and then the colonists would would uh, have uh, revenge, and then just try to burn the cornfields, burn the wigwams, just get them out of there so it didn't happen. I think the French might have tried working with the Indians a little mo bit more, and and uh, in, incorporated like the the villages and and the the colonists cities together as best they could but i mean when a savage snaps they they just they go on a, a killing spree okay and there's there's just no rationalizing with them all right you, you got to deal with you had to deal with the indians forcefully all right but i mean the colonists too they were they were a little tricky and and just going to the king for for land to buy land the king would grant them land and they'd take it even you know if the indians gave them permission or not sometimes indians sold their land for alcohol and uh they love their alcohol all right they also love their weapons the indians love alcohol and weapons and they would they would just abuse abuse uh themselves uh with with uh with that with trading 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 uh indians is, is strange they they valued wampum on a high level i thought that was interesting this type of seashell it's like gold to them and they made all the kinds of weird bead uh decorations to maybe serve as a identification in some way but uh yeah it's uh, the settlers would call the chiefs, the Indian chiefs. You never, I never saw one reference to chief. The chief was always called a king by the settler. All right, and I thought that was that was interesting. Oh, there was this one part. Uh, there's the Christian missionaries who would try to convert the Indians, and some Indians were convertible, but oh my God, this some some Indians turned on the settlers too, and one one um missionary uh got baptized by boiling water incredible so uh the barbarian having said took a full kettle poured it on his body three times in derision uh yeah here well baptized that's that's something i saw in the game of thrones and the guy had the gold poured on his head crowned for a king <laughs> it's uh you take it right from actual reality back back then that was reality